Is everybody breathing here right now? Hmm? Please check. Don't take things for granted. It doesn't go on forever, it'll stop someday, you know. Are you breathing right now? You? Hmm? Please check, don't it, don't just take it for granted. Are you really breathing? You're there, okay? This inhalation, exhalation, inhalation, exhalation, inhalation, exhalation. Next inhalation did not happen, poof, you're gone. See how fragile you are. Just if this one inhalation does not go, wherever we look you won't be around. At the same time, so fragile human life is, at the same time, how sturdy it is, how many things a human being can do in this world. On one level, it seems to be so fragile, just look at it and see. It doesn't come back. Pfft. Too fragile, isn't it? You're taking it for granted, you're not conscious about it. If you become conscious and watch it, it's a damn fragile life. At the same time, how sturdy it is, how many things it can do. This is the beauty of creation. Everything is tenderly balanced. So tenderly, you cannot disturb it, <laughs> not easily, you know. The whole creation is like this, it's just like that. That shows the mastery of the Creator. It is so tenderly balanced, that means, that shows, that manifests the mastery of the Creator. That which creates is of such mastery that it can afford to keep it so tender. So that is the adversity of the Creator. One breath, if you do not inhale, you're gone. But <laughs> that's the confidence in design <laughs> that the Creator has. So this breath is not just about exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. In yoga, we call this the kurmanadi. Breath is referred to as the kurmanadi. Now, if I ask you to watch your breath, which is the most common thing that people are doing these days, you don't get to watch the breath. You think you're watching the breath, but you're not watching the breath. You're only able to notice the sensations caused by the movement of the air. If one who is sitting next to you touches your hand, you think you know the touch of the other person, but you do not know. You only know the sensations generated within your body. You do not know how the other feels. You only know what kind of sensation happen in your body. Yeah? You understand what I'm saying? So right now, you do not know the breath, you only know the sensations caused by the breath. So when we say kurmanadi, we are not talking about the sensations, we are talking about the breath itself. Kurmanadi is referred to as a string, it's like a string, an unbroken string, it's going on. And this is the string which ties you with this body. If I take away your breath, you and your body will fall apart. What you thought is one will become two, that is the first deception. There are two behaving like one, a deception is on. So if I pull out the breath, you and your body will fall apart. We don't want you to fall apart. But if your consciousness travels with the breath, if your awareness travels with the passage of the breath keenly enough, then you will see, distinctly see, these two are not one. What is you and what is your body will stand apart. What is you and what is your mind will stand apart. 
if you and your body mind combination stand away from each other then suddenly you will find your ability to use your body and your mind goes into a phenomenal sc scale if right now if you have to count from 1 to 10 right the highest is 10 if that is so if you're attached or if you're involved with this body you're less than one that's where it is if these two things come apart suddenly you can rev it up all the way to 10 your ability to use the mind and the body is so greatly enhanced that you almost look superhuman for somebody else but i'm telling you this is human this is not about being superhuman this is about realizing being human is super yes not a simple thing to be human now the isha kriya just involves this your thought is playing a very important role in your life right now so let's employ that and your breath is vital so let's employ that and with it without your awareness you wouldn't know that you are even here right now <laughs> if you're not aware you do not even know whether you're alive or dead or whether you exist or not so these three ingredients your breath your thought and your awareness in the right combination if you use them you will see slowly a little bit of distance arises between you and your body now you are very distinctly moving from untruth to truth. So what we will do is sit in a cross-legged posture and keep your hands open facing upward. Sit with your face slightly upturned. The moment you sit this way with a slightly upturned face, you will see naturally your focus will shift between your eyebrows. So maintain this mild focus between your eyebrows and now what you do is, you take these two thoughts with inhalation, one thought with exhalation, another thought. I will walk you through this. Whatever the duration of the thought, let that be the duration of inhalation and whatever the duration of the other thought, let that be the duration of your exhalation. With inhalation, we will take this thought I am not this body. With exhalation, you'll take the other thought, I am not even this mind. I am not this body, I am not even the mind. Now, oh, I am not this body, what does it mean? Will I lose my body? That which you accumulate, you can claim it's yours. But the moment you think it's me, you're actively heading towards insanity. As I sit here, if I suddenly say, this is my vessel, you will think, well, Sadhguru seems to have a problem. <laughs> but you know, there's a reputation of being wise. So you will sit for some more time. After some time I said, this is me, you will say, let's go. <laughs> because the moment I say, this is me, it seems like absolute insanity. There's no sign of sanity. But this has happened and it's continuing to happen. The food that you eat, when it arrives on your plate, this you say, this is my food, you eat it and immediately you say, this is me. Insanity, but you're in a socially accepted levels of insanity. Okay, you cannot be yet pushed into an asylum because then we will have to build a worldwide asylum, WWA <laughs> So, this is an open asylum. You know, 
there's something called an open prison, just like that. This is an open asylum, but it doesn't matter. The moment you start thinking an object which is not you as yourself, you have taken the first step towards madness. It only takes life to push you harder. If difficult situations arise continuously, you will head there towards madness. As there is a physical body, there is a mental body and an energy body. In the structure of the energy body, there are seventy-two thousand nadis or pathways or channels in which the vital energy moves. These seventy-two thousand nadis meet and redistribute in one hundred and fourteen different places. There are one hundred and fourteen important junction points. So these one hundred and fourteen junctions are referred to as the chakras. So there are one hundred and fourteen chakras in the body, one hundred and twelve within the physical body, two slightly outside the physical body. Of all these one hundred and fourteen chakras, there is only one chakra in the whole body where all the nadis or all the pathways meet at one point. That is known as the Manipuraka, which is physically located about three-fourths of an inch below your navel. So the navel is known as Manipuraka or it is known as the maintenance center. Body is maintained from here because this is the only place where all the pathways of prana or the vital energy meet and redistribute themselves. Even when you were in your mother's womb, where was the maintenance pipe connected to you? It's at the navel. So today that has been severed but still the maintenance center is in the navel. So this is the Manipuraka chakra, this is the only place where everything meets. If you utter the sound ah, you will see the reverberation begins just about three-fourths of an inch below your navel and spreads right across the body. Just feel this and see. Close your eyes, keep your spine erect. Utter the sound ah, fully exhaling into the sound. You will see the vibrations starting three-fourths of an inch below your navel and spreading right across the body. This is the only sound which takes the reverberations right across the body. So, reminding yourself through your breath and thought and awareness that you are not the body, you are not the mind, if this message has to go viral to every cell in the body, if the message has to go, it has to be taken to Manipuraka. Then only the information goes everywhere, otherwise it gets localized. So when you utter the sound, ah, oh, if this has sunk into you, if this awareness has sunk into you that I am not the body, I am not the mind, then it reminds every cell in the body in case they have false notions, just like you. It takes the message across the body. So just seven times, uttering this seven times, the sound ah will take the message across and after that you simply sit. Every day, every day, if you do this, you will sit one day when you sit here, your body is here, your mind is out there, what is you is somewhere else. And even if you open your eyes, if you become like this, that there is a distinct separation between you and your body, between you and your mind, this is the end of suffering. Because there are only two kinds of suffering that you have known in your life, physical and mental. Once there is a little space between you and the body, between you and the mind, that is the end of suffering. 
Only when the fear of suffering completely disappears from your perception, only then, as a human being, you will explore the full depth and dimension of who you are. You will dare to explore the full scope of what it means to be human only when there is no fear of suffering. Otherwise, as long as fear of suffering is there, every step that you take is only half a step. And if you keep taking half steps, you become half a life. If you want to become a fully blossomed life, it is very important that there is no fear of suffering. And that is only possible when there is a little distance between you and the body, between you and the mind. As long as you're identified as the body, as long as you're identified with the mental process, fear is a natural process. So sound R takes the message across the body to every cell in the body.